Yeah, everybody. Um, really excited about this episode. We're going to talk about not just the difference on U.S. based foods ingredients, the difference also in the U.K. overseas, but we're joined by not, I can't even say special guests anymore. Not that you're not special, Chuck, but like we have you on enough and like, you know, being the VP of operations and being the man coach facilitating all these things, I feel like you're just a part of the organization, right? So I think it's a special guest. I'm going to say special guest, but Chuck, thanks for joining us as always. I guess I'm not special anymore, but I am kind of special, but not special. Right, so I, I don't know, we'll, we'll leave it to the audience. I want to have you guys vote actually. So shoot us either, if you're watching this like on YouTube, comment, let me know what you guys think. I want to hear about this. Or just DM me on social right. media. Or, okay, is Chuck special or not? That's, and if you saw, I actually, um, today, you guys won't know what today is. So on October 21st is today? Yeah, on the 21st of October, I did a video about everybody needs a Chuck in their life. So I would highly recommend you guys go check this out because you're going to see why in this video. With all that being said, getting that out of the way, I wanted to actually, we, we talked about this a little bit before, mention, um, you know, the Action Taker Fitness course is closed, but we're actually incorporating our 28-day challenge with um, private practices, studios, and facilities. We're actually doing a private challenge right now with um, Ash Hot Yoga in Long Island, New York. Um, so I'm really excited about that, largely due to you and Pina. And I wanted to mention that for any of the gym owners out there, or people that know their gym, you're out of gym, and you feel like you know, the nutritional piece could be a great complement to whatever is going on. Reach out to us. We're really looking to, to kind of fulfill that need in this place and also generate revenue for the facility, for the gym as another piece to that. All right. So, Chuck, all that being said, and we'll circle back to that and tie in where the challenge, I think, fits in with all this nutrition talk. Let's talk a little bit about because you kind of proposed this topic. I thought it was an ingenious time to talk about it with where the state of the world is and also just the topic in general of U.S. ingredients versus U.K. ingredients. Some of you may not even know there's a difference, so we can maybe start there. Yeah, so what actually prompted this was I saw a couple of Instagram posts recently regarding U.K. ingredients versus U.S. ingredients, and it just got me thinking to why the FDA is allowing certain ingredients to be put in our food products versus what the UK and the European unions and the Mediterranean kind of diet versus the US diet. So when you look at like a product like ketchup, um, ketchup has got a ton of sugar and fillers and all kinds of stuff in it. But when you look at the UK version, it's basically just tomato based and various other products to sweeten it up, but mostly natural ingredients to sweeten it up. So it, it, it just kind of got my mind running as to, you know, what the products and what were as a U.S. based, you know, society is putting in their body what the rest of the world is putting in their body. And a lot of people with the pandemic, everybody has been sitting at home. A lot of people don't feel safe going to the gym. So they haven't really been getting, been getting as much exercise prior to the pandemic as what they've been doing now. So they've just been sitting at home not really motivated, not really exercises, just kind of eating and eating the wrong foods. And based upon those wrong foods, feeding that bad bacteria in their stomach, which is ultimately gonna send those signals to your brain for cravings. And it's just an ever evolving, rotating, I'm just gonna constantly eat the wrong stuff. Feed that bad bacteria that's sending the signals to our brain that's constantly saying, but yeah, I'm hungry, I need some chocolate, I need some sugar, I need some carbohydrates. So it got me really thinking, and that's why I reached out to you to say, hey, what can we do to educate the people as to our food intake in the U.S. versus what they're doing over in Europe? Yeah, and to your point, even just pulling out ketchup for a second, I pulled up a couple of the most popular examples of this, um, looking at a couple of, and just to go through ketchup, for example, so the U.S. is tomato concentrate, distilled vinegar. I'm cool with both of those, obviously. High fructose yeah. corn syrup. There we go. That's the red flag one. Corn syrup, salt, spice, onion powder, natural flavorings. Now, when you look at the UK version, tomatoes, not, you know, tomato concentrate. So I thought even just that in and of itself is interesting. Just right. straight up tomatoes, uh, spirit vinegar, sugar, salt, spice, herb extracts, and spice again after that. So still, I'm not saying there's not, it's not sweet. It's still sweetened, but sugar versus high fructose corn syrup and corn syrup in addition is just even that of itself something to highlight. And then being able to, to your point, look at, you know, the cycle, this negative feedback loop that we're gonna get on of, okay, so I'm making this choice. Now it's gonna change the bacteria that I have in my gut. That gut bacteria is now communicating to my brain, influencing my choices. Those choices are now gonna feed me into taking more action on the choices that are gonna proliferate this bacteria that we don't want. And then it just becomes more and more of a cycle. And like, you know, even to the point of 
portions, I thought was an interesting piece of this too. Not just the ingredients, but if you look at portions, like McDonald's is a popular one that gets used a lot, a lot of different, whether it's documentaries or social media or articles, even from the research, they highlight McDonald's because McDonald's is one of those turnkey franchise based, even a corporate organization that you think you're going to go in at, you know, Chicago and, and get the same meal than if you were going to go into I don't know, what's a city, like London, for example. You're gonna think you get the same thing. And for the most part, you kind of are, but there's difference in sizes and the potential ingredients, right? Yeah, and that was like, I've been all over the world and I've walked obviously into a McDonald's in let's say Hong Kong versus a McDonald's in the United States. The menu is slightly the same, but the ingredients are very, very different. Uh, and that's the thing, like the, the population here, the, you know, me personally, I don't eat McDonald's. I don't eat fast food of any type, but yes, They've tried to clean their menu up. They put more salads on their menu, but even the, the, the salad dressings and the thing that they're, that they're using, not the best healthy ingredients because these companies, these franchises, these fast food markets are looking out for one thing and they're looking out for their bottom line. They don't really care about that nutritional value of the product that they're giving a customer. And they can market this all they want that it's a healthier McDonald's. It's really not. McDonald's is looking out for their bottom line. They're not looking out for your health. So my wife and I, we eat very organic in this in this household. You know, it does cost more money to eat grass-fed meats, to eat organic foods, um, but not a lot of people do that. And we get into the point where, yeah, we don't like to cook all the time, so we will go out to a restaurant, and we don't know what those restaurants and the quality of ingredients that those restaurants are, are using. So by doing this 28-day challenge, just, I mean, we're on day, what, three or four of the challenge, I've had severe, caffeine withdrawals, headaches, craving, these all kinds of stuff. And again, we eat 90% clean in the products that we have here. But when we go out to these restaurants, again, it's mostly just restaurants. We don't eat fast food. The quality of ingredients that just a, a regular restaurant alone is using versus a fast food chain is vastly different from what you have in your household. Yeah, and just the, I think the prep time of it and also thinking about, you know, when, and even just like, hey, it's a healthier McDonald's. It's like, that's like, um, I, I don't know any companies that exclusively make poison, for example, but let's just call it poison, right? Hey, it's a healthier poison. So it's not gonna kill you in two weeks. It's only gonna, it's gonna kill you in like three months or I'm, I'm making up this example, but that's to me what comes across. And I'm all for like, listen, if we're traveling and you find yourself at McDonald's, the only place that's open in 50 miles, it's the only choice you have. Hey, we have ways that we can even make choices on that menu, um, but then you can even ask like, well, why are we unprepared? Like what happened to meal prep? There's all these other things. And you may, again, find yourself in those emergency situations and there's ways, we even have content on the Life of a Fighter website, you know, to, to talk about making good choices in those situations. But even with what we're doing, like you said, with the challenge and seeing how your body responds, and even with us being healthy and what we would consider like on that upper 1% of health and choices, still seeing the influence that it has on our body. Like I haven't had as much about the caffeine headaches and withdrawals at this point, but even still like I've noticed, you know, some of the, um, you know, food cravings kicking in later in the day. And if I'm not hydrating and I'm not staying on point, being mindful of those things and having all those pieces kind of add up. And that's why I want to go back to, you know, even if you look at like the awareness to health and choices, like if you look at the, let's just take the UK again, for example, versus the USA, like just total calories consumed per meal per day, the obesity rates. It's not, I'm not saying the rest of the world isn't climbing with certain things. The rest of the world is definitely seeing an increase there, but the rate at which we're doing it in America versus everywhere else it really does have to raise signs on and even to the financial cost part the thing i always always feel is like well, what's more expensive spending an extra x amount or percentage on your food or having a heart attack at you know 40 50 being laid up the cost there and like you know if we can get into the nitty-gritty even on that piece of it too yeah so it's about taking time to invest in your health now versus investing in your health later on because if you invest in your health now and you make healthier food choices now and you don't spend the money on going into McDonald's, but you want to spend a little bit more money on healthier organic grass-fed foods now versus later on having a health issue, having a heart attack, having a stroke, having something that's going to completely impact your life. We have to make a healthier choice then because you had something impact your life or your health. Make those healthier choices now. Invest in yourself now where you don't have to invest later on in life after something drastic has happened. I am. And that's, that's why I think going to your point earlier, talking about the Mediterranean diet and that philosophy just in Europe and even being in Asia, like one thing I, I learned in Thailand is they, they put sugar in like everything. So that was something to be mindful of. But 
the other caveat that I did notice is even though they put sugar and everything, the the processed level of the foods themselves isn't the same. So it's A, between just the activity and how much more active they are as a society versus even to your point being earlier with the activity, not being at work, maybe not getting steps in. That's a common theme I hear with other clients that I work with or even from our coaching team. It's like, hey, you know, I'm definitely feeling that impact from the pandemic, from COVID, from the impact that's had and the change and the stress and those variables. And then when we go back to the relationship the gut has, guess what, if you're stressed out, if you're creating the habit of eating sugary foods and then those sugary foods also have ingredients that are addictive in nature and are you know synthetically made chemicals in a lab that also kind of encourage you to want to have more of that and influence your bacteria it's again feeding into that loop and i think it becomes our responsibility as a society to vote with our dollar not just in a political sense with like that and we don't have to get into that but more in hey if you stop spending money at mcdonald's guess what they and that's why they had to make a change right if you look at the campaigns behind that they had to make healthier changes because there was that awareness i'm sure they felt it in their bottom line and being able to say hey i'm going to support those like a trader joe's for example or a whole foods when you see those things kind of pop up you're like all right that society or this state or this county or this community is more mindful i see it in Asheville versus to where we were in long island in new york um even though there's a healthy options there too which i, I like to see but but yeah, I, I think that's a big piece. And honestly, taking personal ownership of like, hey, it's up to me. Like, even though, and we are saying, hey, there is a difference. And I definitely highlight the FDA's choices and other organizational choices, but it's up to us to own like, all right, now you have this information. Everyone listening and watching right now, you now have this information. What are you gonna do about it, right? Like it's one thing to have it, it's another thing to act on it. Right, so I'm gonna issue out a challenge to everybody right now. Next time you go into a Starbucks to get a delicious Starbucks drink where you know they're putting in like a mocha or a vanilla or something, just ask the barista how many grams of sugar are in each pump of the serving of what they're putting in there. So I asked one time and, and I was baffled and I don't want to give away the secret, but just ask, go in there, ask for a regular sugary crazy drink that most people will normally not even think about. They're just going to go in there and ask for a you know, vanilla, mocha, whatever, crazy. Yeah, macchiato. I'm gonna go with yeah, whatever. Macchiato. Ask for it. Caramel macchiato. Ask how many grams are in each pump, and then ask how many pumps they're putting into that cup of coffee. And then after your mind is completely blown, make that change. And then ask for, hey, can you cut half of the sugar? Don't put as many pumps in there. Make that first step. And then after you make that step and you kind of get accustomed to it, then ask for a sugar-free version. Most coffee shops and most places are gonna have a sugar-free version of a vanilla or a caramel or something. Make those baby steps. Cut half of the sugar out if you wanna make a small change. And then after you make that small change, make another change. You know, look at what's on the back of your, we talked about this earlier, what the FDA did back in the 50s by saying fat is bad and they stripped out all the fat and they came out with all low fat products and they started dumping in sugar to create flavor for these products. Just take a look at the back of something. Look at a regular yogurt that's adding fruit into it. And just look at the how many grams of sugar are in the back of a yogurt. If it's over 10 grams of sugar, put it down. Don't eat it. A regular you know, vanilla yogurt is gonna have around 10 grams of sugar in there. You can add your own fruit. It doesn't have to be a fruit preservative into a yogurt. But make these healthier choices, and I guarantee you're going to start to feel better. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's a really good point. It's not only having, because I think a lot of us, and when I say us, I mean a lot of society will say. Because what I hear from people is like, well, I don't know what healthy is, or I don't know, you know, where to start, or it's so overwhelming. And that's one side of the coin I hear. And then there's the other side, and I think this is the more honest, truthful side. Is like, I know what to do. I just don't want to do it. I don't like doing it. Whatever. So I think the person says you don't know what to do. You're either lying which it's okay like be, just be honest with yourself or you're just not leveraging because there's so much technology you can google anything you can. it's definitely confusing that's maybe the other piece it could be confusing if you don't know and i'll give you that and even the people that do like hey i just don't have that motivation that's why i think having a chuck that's why i did a video on this earlier today having a chuck having someone to hold you accountable having the life of a fighter team that's why we do our challenges that's why we do our coaching services that's why we do all these the course that we put out you know having these things and i'm not saying it has to be with us like obviously i'm going to encourage you to work with us because i think what we put out is great but i just want you to change your life so even if it's not me if it's chuck or if it's another coach or whomever even outside of our organization fine but make a change in your life and remember that and be able to incorporate that change and like chuck said make 
those baby steps. And Chuck always used this analogy with me, Legos. And I kind of remember this before, right? Like we're gonna build a building or build a Lego house. You can't put the top of the house down first, right? We have to have a foundation. And I'll, I'll leave that to you, Chuck. I don't want to butcher your Legos analogy here. It's been such a powerful one for me. I, I explain it to so many people so often. I feel like I kind of get it down now. Somebody said it to me. So it's not my analogy. I didn't make it up. I just use it, you know. And it, it it's very it's a, a very powerful way of going around thinking about things. You can't build a house without having proper foundation. So it, whether it comes to fitness, whether it comes to nutrition, whether it comes to just day-to-day -day life, you can't have a strong house if you don't have a solid foundation. So rather than running around and trying to make all the steps, you know, if we want to, you know, have a healthier nutrition lifestyle, we have to have a solid foundation and make those baby steps. Because if you just try to rush and do everything at once, 99% of the population is gonna fail. And they're gonna give up and they're gonna say, this is too much, it's overwhelming, I don't wanna do it anymore, I'm gonna go back to my old ways because I'm comfortable in my old ways and I'll just be this way and I'll feel this way and it's okay because I was feeling okay before. I may not have felt 100% better, but I was feeling okay and I was doing okay. Um, but if you start making those healthier lifestyles and those healthier choices and take those baby steps to build that foundation, like again, what I said about the Starbucks analogy, if I just cut half of the sugar out, that's one cornerstone. And then if I cut out the sugar and go with a sugar-free option, that's another cornerstone. And then change from milk to a cream, that's another cornerstone. You know, if I make these healthier choices and I build these cornerstones around a solid foundation, then I can start building my way up. And it's that way with everything, whether it's fitness, whether it's nutrition, whether it's life in general, whether it's career, there's so many things you can look at with the Legos analogy. Um, I do it with you all the time. Like we said, we just had a long conversation the other day about contracts and everything and not rushing into things. Let's build that cornerstone and the end outcome is gonna be greater than the, the minor little wins that you get from just trying to rush something. So if you look upstream and you look down the road, I like to call it upstream thinking. If you look down the road, if you look upstream, the end result is gonna be a much greater result than these little minor things that you do where you try to rush it and just try to build everything up at one time and you fail. What you get out of that is gonna be very minor versus building these blocks and, and, and then putting all of the effort in and doing it over time. And again, I like to say it, Mike has said it, every coach needs a coach. And even if you're a coach, find yourself a coach. If you don't have a coach and if you're not a coach, find yourself a coach. Everybody needs advice in their life, whether like Mike did the find your Chuck thing today, everybody needs somebody to fall back on, whether it's your, your spouse, whether it's a, a family relative or whether it's a coach. And that's why we're here. Um, you know, if anybody needs it, our services are here. We're not trying to push it on you. But if you need a coach, find yourself a coach. And just to like, that's almost how I think we we're kind of cap it at there because that's just such a strong point. And you guys have actionable steps from that. So you got the combo of great it. Like, so these are the three kind of core values I personally have. And I think you know, like, that's what I built life of a fighter on the Chuck. I feel like, you know, match with you. And that's why I love working with people such as yourself, especially you is like, I, we, there's three things I always want to accomplish, educate, inspire, and improve. So I feel like we're trying to educate you with this content, right? Trying to inspire you with a little bit of action, the stories, and then improve your life by having you be able to take action. So you guys have actionable tasks now that you can take. You have some insight, you have some knowledge. So you have a responsibility, in my opinion, to be able to take action on that and also share it. So I think one thing I kind of want to give you guys as another actionable step is tag somebody that you think could benefit this from. Benefit from this, whether it's, hey, I want you to be my accountability buddy on this and tag them in. You know, that's what me and Chuck were talking about before too. Like I tag Chuck in on situations all the time and like maybe even too much so that, you know, I, I feel reassured with certain things and it just, even having that voice to like, or, or having that person to talk to and have it to bounce off of and then get you back on, you know, like coach, uh, from the coaching side, like I look to Chuck as being one of my, you know, strong coaches to hold me accountable and vice versa. I think where we have that, you know, like, hey, like we share goals with each other. We're going to hold each other accountable. And it's not because like, hey, I know more than you about this or you know more than me. And, and there's very much Chuck knows a lot more than I do, but it's not about that. It's about having that other person to be accountable to and being able to take those actions. So I want to just highlight that for you guys, give you some actual steps just from, if it's not going to be us, like tag in a buddy, share this, comment them, let them know that you want to kind of turn to them. And, you know, obviously you have us here. 
you go to lifeofafighter.com and go to www.life of the what life of a fighter dot academy i almost wanted to change our brand name and everything i don't know what happened there and um yeah that's pretty much all the stuff i got i'm gonna stop ranting because i can go into a whole another rant um about a bunch of different stuff but appreciate you guys chuck i always appreciate you being here and just having you on board now like i want to pump it out to the world that you're the official vp of operations so you guys might notice we're just leveling up in a lot of different ways and chuck's a big reason to that i mean behind the scenes chuck you've always been involved since day one really um so it's not like this is that that new but it's like more trying to you know my wife lost my balls about this because she's like you know if you just listen a little bit more it probably help um, so I'm trying to listen to Chuck more and, and have that be with it. I appreciate you. It took me seven years to get you to listen to just a couple of the ideas. <laughs> so, you know, listen more. Well, I listen, I'll always be there for you. I'll always be there for Life of a Fighter. I'm always there for anybody who wants the help. So that, the first step is reaching out to ask for the help. Um, that's the biggest, the, the biggest hurdle is to identify when you need the help and want to get the help. You've done it to me, I've done it to you. I reached out to you the other day. Um, it, that accountability buddy that you said, I love that term to have somebody, and that's what's missing a lot of time, in my opinion, with online coaches and with coaches in general, is that accountability. They get a pool of clients and then they forget about certain clients and they just focus on a couple of them. That's what I love working with you about is because we don't forget about our clients. We have accountability for all of our clients, including you and me, because technically we're both clients. Um, so I, I love that about working with you and Life of Fighter and, and, and all the coaches that we technically work with. So pumped about it. Ooh, so I wanna, I'm gonna cap the fact for the episode, but if you guys wanna hang around for like five more minutes, I'm gonna tag in a bonus story for anyone that wants to hang around for this, why not? And then me and, me and you, Chuck, we gotta go pause and probably eat some food too. We're breaking our fast now. We gotta fuel up and then go crush your work. I, I actually, I got mine in this morning. May not have been the best move. I was like doing rack pulls and stuff like that and then did not fueling afterwards. I feel all right, surprisingly, but in the future, I'm not gonna probably do that. I'm gonna squat heavy tonight. I gotta tell you, that's why I wanted to wait until I eat so I can squat. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I was I was kind of running on a full stomach from the night before when I stopped my fast, almost like a purposely calculated thing. So that was anyway. So the bonus story I wanted to share with you guys is talking about follow up, but not forgetting about clients. I won't name names, but one of the contracts that we have, I mean, kind of. So I've, I've shared the story in other platforms. Like the reason why they wanted to work with me and with us was because like, I wouldn't forget about them. I would literally pay them up for months. And it's not even about the money. It was during the pandemic. It was, you know, during the time where I knew people were probably struggling. And even now people are struggling. So I want you guys to know like, we're here for you. And honestly, I apologize if you got a message from me or a video and I'm reaching out and asking about you and you find it annoying, I'm sorry, but I just genuinely care. So just tell me to stop and I'll leave you alone. But just know that that's why I'm reaching out because I care. Chuck reaches out because he cares. Like our team reaches out because we care. Not because there's necessarily something we can gain from it, but just because we want to see, because ultimately if we can have that impact and change the world and change lives, like everyone's going to benefit, right? So that's my story, y'all. I wanted to add that bonus in, Chuck. I appreciate you hanging out for that bonus piece. Um, and yeah, let's go with Manja now. Manja Ola. Eat up. All right, Mike. Yeah, you are.